Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Today is May 6, 2022. Early in the morning, having some fun, enjoying life. Got the lobster on the microphone and a nice uh, giant bag of pretzels that I got. It's very salty, these pretzels. Look, look how salty that is. It almost reminds me of Twitter. And I am back from California, land of the avocado toast and $15 earth shots and all that other shit. God, I'm very glad I don't live there. Although I did get this. This is pretty cool. This is uh, black ivory coffee. How about that? It's $2,500 a kilogram. So I basically, I guess it's competing with cocaine. Uh, and how, how it's made is elephants eat coffee beans and uh, they digest them and they shit them out. And then some guy goes and sifts through the coffee, uh, through the poo, and takes out the coffee beans and roasts them. And, and then apparently that makes it taste really good. So this is my $2,500 elephant poop coffee. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Only in California. Um, so uh, as many of you know, I uh, I go to various events throughout the years. And uh, this year I was invited to go to the uh, Milken Institute annual conference that they have in uh, Los Angeles, California. And uh, it was really interesting. It was who's who. I uh, went to so many after parties. I was at Dan Loeb's house uh, hanging out with uh, a litany of different uh, people in Wall Street and other uh, places. I went to Eric Schmidt's birthday party. Uh, that was fun. Uh, and I also had a chance to see David Rothschild, uh, who's a little out there eco-adventurer and spent four hours talking about Antarctica and creating a nation state for uh, for nature and all, all kinds of things. Uh, but basically, uh, it's an event where people go and talk about where the world is going to go and how to invest and move in that direction. Uh, so uh, it was a nice mixture of everyone. And we got to see uh, the, several other blockchains represented there, most notably Algorand. Apparently, they sponsored the event, so they announced their FIFA relationship, and they were going around saying uh, they're going to democratize finance and so forth. Uh, of course, we wish them well. Uh, Cardano uh, was well represented. We had a, a lot of great events. Uh, we basically worked with Wave and rented a little penthouse at the Waldorf Astoria, and Every night had an after party and invited lots of people to come. And it was a pretty eclectic crowd from investors to um, and family offices to uh, the girls from Pussy Riot. So it tells you the diversity of the crowd right there of, of different people that come and go. I got to see a lot of prominent families from Africa as well and also see the uh, uh, Milk and Scholars program and their graduation. So well worth the time. Um, there's a lot of love and a lot of passion, a lot of excitement. As uh, many of you know, uh, Cardano has been growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, we have almost a thousand DAP projects on chain. Uh, TVL is going up. Uh, you know, if you in, in not in absolute terms because the prices of all cryptos are going down, but actually when you look at the raw amount of uh, stuff, it, it actually is going up. Uh, staking still is at 74%. Vossel hard fork is still on schedule for June 29th. Uh, pipelining is going to be a huge performance improvement. Uh, we have a very strong DEX game right now. Jed just hit the test net, finally. Uh, I think chain link integration is underway. There's uh, there's a lot of things going on here. It's it's pretty active ecosystem. And the second half of the year is going to speed up even more. Uh, you know, there's enormous amount of work being done on the overall open source project structure, enormous amount of work being done on getting more permanency behind the alliances that are forming. And consensus is going to be a huge event for us. June 9th to 12th, we'll have a pre-consensus party, invite the whole Cardano community. It's June 8th. Uh, I believe that's up on event right now. Uh, and uh, we're going to showcase a lot of things that have been going on and where Cardano's at. It's a little bizarre that month by month, we continue to achieve great progress. We continue to get more access. We're rubbing shoulders with the most powerful people in the world and uh, getting adoption. Yet then there's, in the crypto media side, people basically assume that nothing is getting done and there's no progress. And in fact, uh, uh, Crypto Banter uh, ran said that we don't even have a working DEX 
there's like five of them that are running all right now on mainnet. And uh, if you want to swap something, the swaps happen in less than 30 seconds. And on the load is higher today if you sum up those five than when Sunday swap launched. So I don't understand what the definition of working DEX is if uh, you know you have something that works in under a minute and there's a lot of them and more launching and every month performance gets better. You went from like multi-day settlement time in some cases to 30 seconds uh, in a six-month spread. That's pretty good progress. Uh, that's pretty good uh, momentum. DevX continues to get better. You know, there are a lot more integrations are coming. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're having deep, detailed conversations about the things that need to be done. And like any ecosystem, there's some growing pains, but communities with us on that. And we're making, uh, making great progress. The markets as a whole are starting to deflate a little bit. You know, the NFT markets are down. Uh, Bitcoin is down. Everything is draining. And what is most surprising uh, is that, uh, you know, crypto is trading cyclically with uh, the equity markets. I always imagined that if you were of the belief that the global economy is collapsing, that crypto is the safe harbor. So as the stock market collapses, interest rates go up, economies contract, Bitcoin and everything else should go up. But actually, as the stock markets go down, Bitcoin has been going down, which is a little bizarre. It apparently is following that asset. So there's a, there's a lot of surprises, uh, but you know, what people have to understand is whatever the price is on coin market cap for all cryptocurrencies does not reflect the actual progress, use, and utility of the cryptocurrencies. Just a strange reality that we're in. Uh, and you can be doing everything right. You can be building, growing, have every metric look phenomenal but that's not necessarily reflected there. But I guess if that's the only thing you care about, uh, that's the only thing that matters, then everything else is, is not apparent or important. Uh, the dream is really coming together. You know, May 17th, 18th, we have the certification summit in Barcelona, Spain, bringing all the certification actors together. We're having a deep and detailed conversation about the application of formal methods to smart contracts that will result in certification standards for all Cardano dApps. So we don't have $10.5 billion of stolen or lost money because of design flaws. Uh, light wallet ecosystem is really coming together. In fact, on our side, uh, we should have a light wallet announcement uh, at consensus. But there are many others who have entered the space, and hopefully there should be a wallet certification program that gets stood up, hopefully from the foundation this year. Uh, so that people can certify their wallets and you can get it as a consumer assurances of quality and capabilities. Uh, DAP Store is coming with uh, our Light Wallet. Voting Center is coming with our Light Wallet. Uh, hardware wallet ecosystem has never been better. Smart contract support has just been added. Uh, you know, partial delegation and proxy keys are on the horizon finally. Uh, and all the things on the backlog are finally coming through. In addition to major performance improvements. Pipelining is just one example and put endorsers is the next example. Uh, and these things are near horizon, not long horizon in terms of shipping. Uh, adding more fuel to that fire, the sidechain ecosystem is starting to really heat up. There's been some great conversations, not only about the sidechains we'd like to construct, but the sidechains that the broader ecosystem would like. Before the end of the year, that strategy is going to really materialize and crystallize alongside the enterprise Cardano strategy. So all these pieces that have been threads that were kind of thought about over a multi-year arc are now coming in and are benefiting from the design choices that were made with extended UTXO, Ouroboros, and the ecosystem as a whole, and uh, speeding up instead of slowing down. Meanwhile, the ecosystem continues to grow at an unprecedented rate. There's more people using Cardano today by far than any time in the history of the project. This time last year, we didn't have any smart contract transactions. Now we have over 4 million, three and a half million users, probably more than five, six million wallets, uh, more transactions every day last month than the last year of Cardano. 
TVL depends on how you count it. Uh, for our competitors, apparently staking can count, but for us, it doesn't. If it did, it would be $19 billion, uh, but it doesn't. So, okay. Uh, nobody really wants to give us fair measurements, but when you measure things fairly or comparably, you know, things look fine. Grows every day. And remember, stable coins are just now coming. Algorithmic stable coins, which are a huge contributor to that. So those metrics look solid and fine. Uh, if we continue to ex execute, people just straight up lie about things like uh, Calcasa went and just lied about Ethiopia, just said a bunch of stuff. And meanwhile, by the end of the year, we should have a million kids inside the system. Said we were wasting time. I don't even know what that means. Said we didn't tender properly. I don't know. I spent three years negotiating that. Uh, two different boards had to go through and sign off on that contract. We thought about suing him for slander, you know, but what do you do? You know, people just lie these days. There's no accountability anymore. It really isn't. We live in a post-truth economy where you can measure things and you can take a step back and really look at step by step the things that are happening. Uh, and then you can objectively decide what reality looks like. Or you can just say shit online and no one calls you out on it. Whatever you say, okay. You can write books, whatever you say, okay. Just goes out there. And the gap between what you say and reality grows and grows and grows, but it, there's no reckoning. There's no consequences. No one gets sued. No one cares. This is just where we're at. And it's a very frustrating space for that reason because all I know how to do is just work and build. That's all I know how to do. That's all my company knows how to do. That's all the ecosystem knows how to do. We tell you what we're going to do. We write it down. We go do it. And then we tell you that we did it. And we show you the evidence and proof. That's pretty simple. It's the Paul Halmos way of doing things. I'm, I'm a simple guy. But we don't really live in that world anymore. Now we live in a world of chasing cars going from one to the other. And that kind of makes me sad. It really does. Because uh, it's hard, this space. A lot of people don't know what to trust and where to get news from. And you know, I'm told to ignore it. I'm told to say, ah, well, don't really think too much about it. But the reality is that people do listen to these things, innocently so, and they get caught into them. So combating the FUD, I think, is going to be our big challenge. So for consensus, for example, uh, there's going to be a big showing there, a lot of people there, and who's coming to dabs. Why? Because the narrative right now is no one's using or building on Cardano. So if you get all these people using and building on Cardano at the biggest cryptocurrency event in the United States, doesn't that send a message? Doesn't that tell people we're here? Seems simple enough to me. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work, but uh, at least it's something. You know, and at least we're pushing in that direction. And also bring the community together and have a chance to see them, talk to them. You know, uh, when I was in Miami last year, we had a thousand people at the uh, event that we held in Miami. Hopefully we can match that or grow that. Uh, and uh, we can see as many as people as possible. Austin, Texas doesn't cost you anything to go for our community event. It's free if you just pay the way there. Uh, and chance to meet me, meet the team, and, you know, meet the people building on Cardano, doing interesting things, you know, and we're just going to keep doing that again and again, year after year. It doesn't matter the events. You, know, you the community, are really doing the heavy lift, as are we. There are a lot of challenges ahead. You know, there's a lot of complex technology we have to think about, you know, a lot of design features that we have to slowly sneak in. Uh, but these things are known knowns, meaning that they're quantified, they exist, and just go get it done, write the code, do the work. You know, flip the page. The more interesting things to me are that we are now finally executing on the vision of RealFi. You know, this is the year loans will be done on Cardano microfinance loans to people in Africa with blockchain based identity and stable coins issued on Cardano. It took eight years of building to get us to that moment. I'm proud that we finally are at the dawn of it. 
and to close out the year with this kind of reality is a pretty special thing. And to do it with principles, meaning the our protocols, our formal methods, all the things that we thought as an ecosystem need to be done are done. That's pretty exciting as well. You know, it's really cool to see the evolution of user experience and wallet infrastructure and all these pieces coming together. Uh, and uh, it's kind of weird to be doing it in now a slight crypto recession <laughs> because while we're changing the world, the media is going to go and say crypto's over, crypto's dead. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a uh, it's bad thing. All crypto's falling apart. And you just have to keep moving forward, you know, because it's not for today. It's for the long term, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years and so forth, you know, and uh, that's just where we're at. So anyway, thank you guys for being part of this community and thank you for your patience and thank you for dealing with the bullshit day in and day out. I, uh, I feel your pain and trust me, I understand how frustrating it can be to really put your heart and soul into things and push hard and every single day work hard. Uh, I was on Fox Business. I get up at 4 a.m. for that interview. I was up that day until 1130 at night. That was an average day. That's what we're doing here. That's the kind of effort we're putting in. And then you do all that, and then people say, ah, oh, you're fat, you're lazy, you don't do anything, there's uh, no discipline. It's like, oh, fuck you. You know, and a lot of you are doing exactly the same, especially the 900 plus ventures that are building on Cardano right now. You're putting in even more hours, and it's hard. I've been there, and I'm still there. So I really do appreciate all of that, and I'm really excited about all the things that are coming. And it's good to come back from uh, the Milken Institute and just realize how far we've come. You know, they keep talking about basic problems in the ESG world, and they keep talking about how will we solve X, Y, and Z. And we're just sitting in the corner smiling, saying, like, well, you know, we already have a solution for these things, guys. <laughs> You're a little behind the curve. Uh, so it also tells you how early it really is for crypto. We like to think that uh, the race has been going on for a long time. But this is really the first decade, the one upcoming, uh, that uh, the world is going to start pivoting to blockchain technology. It's going to take until the end of the 2030s to see full institutionalization of the technology being built today. So it's still very early days in that respect. Uh, and we have plenty of time as an ecosystem to really make our mark. What matters is that we make sure that basic principles matter. Because we can build this technology anyway. You can build it in a very centralized way. And when it stops working, uh, like a Nintendo, take out the cartridge, blow on it, put it back in, hope it works. You know, and you can have central actors in control of everything. You can hand it to Google. You can hand it to big Fortune 500 companies. Or you can build it decentralized at its core. It takes a little longer. It takes a little bit more work. It takes more sophisticated protocols and better checks and balances. But in the end, you end up having a system with integrity. And I'd like to believe that that's the route we should go. And that's ultimately what this project has been about. We've never lost any business over it. In fact, quite the contrary. We're oversubscribed. There's rack capacity as an ecosystem. Everybody's working full time. There's no waiting for business. Uh, so it seems that there is an appetite, at least somewhere in this industry, and globally speaking, for what we sell, which is hope for a better world. So thank you for being part of that, and thank you for everything that you've put in. It's uh, it's a process, uh, and uh, we'll keep grinding. And to the haters, I do like these pretzels. They're pretty salty. Y'all have a nice day. I'll see you soon. Cheers.